Paul Smith was the um, owner of Celador and the, well, one of the founding fathers of the game, the sort of originator of the game, along with a couple of other people. It's kind of hard to put into a nutshell, to be honest with you. It's a, it, it, it's a, it's a really, it's a, I don't want to describe it as a romp, because it's not a romp, but it has romp elements, and it has its little bit of everything, really a little bit of farce, a lot of mystery, I suppose. Um, but it's, it's a kind of, I hesitate to use this phrase, but it's a kind of good old-fashioned entertainment show. It was written really well. <laughs> uh, to, play a, to play a real person is always um, a challenge. And uh, I knew that Paul was still around, and it, it's, um, it, 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 was a, it was a fantastic story. And the fact that people are still talking about it now, and the fact that people are still making television programs about it now is a testament to its longevity and it's, uh, it's the way it's captivated the, the nation, really, and the way it captivated the nation then and still does now. So playing a real person is, is, is more pressure than making up a person because you have to kind of be, you want to do it well for them. Um, so yeah, and you want to serve the story well, you want to tell it well, you want to to be as honest to the, this telling of the story, you know, because this this isn't the truth. This is a version of the truth that James has, has come up with, you know. Um, so you want to, yeah, you want to do it justice and, um, you know, um, flesh out as well as you can. Yeah, I do. I remember the I remember the Furore. I, I mean, I, I watched. I think I watched the show. I mean, everybody kind of watched the show a bit. It was one of those shows that if you... I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't in the days when, um, when, when there was lots and lots to choose from. There was, there was four channels, maybe five channels, I can't remember. Four, no, four channels, um, I think, when it first started out. Um, and so if you kind of... If it was on and you found it when you were kind of flicking, you stayed with it. You know, it was one of those shows because it was all, it always at some point guaranteed some drama and also it was great knowing the questions when they didn't, you know. What I did was I read the script and thought, wow, okay, who knows? And then I watched the documentary, the Martin Bashir documentary. Uh, which very, very wholly comes down the side of guilt, really heavily. Um, and you sort of go, my God, totally guilty. But then you watch, you, again, you go back to this show and you go, hmm. well, you know, they're appealing for the fourth time or whatever it is this year. They're still trying to protest their innocence. Why? And you sort of go, well, why would they be guilty do that? You know, put themselves through that if they weren't, but then you speak to Paul and Paul was absolutely guilty. I'm obviously uh, know Michael's work. I'd never worked with him before, but um, I'm an admirer of his. So yeah, so when you meet somebody that you're an admirer of and whose work you've loved, you you do sort of go, whew, okay, better be on my game today. Um, and uh, I, we only had, we only have two scenes together, I think maybe three, um, but uh, yeah, so you, you, you get it, but that's good, it's good to, it's good to feel nervy. Oh, the set was weird, that, yeah, that was really weird. Walking onto the set was like, oh my God, surprisingly small, given this is the, you know, uh, it's amazing when you do, like, I did CBeebies Bedtime Stories, right, a wee while ago, and you go onto their set, and it's tiny. And when you watch it on the telly, it looks, mad. well, it looks like a huge, big house. And it's the same with Millionaire. Millionaire's like this expanse when you watch it on the TV, but when you walk onto the stage, it's actually not that big, you know, it's quite small. So, but yeah, that was a really surreal experience when I first walked into the studio. 
Yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, trying on the suits were going back in time. You should, if you ever get a chance, don't try on a 90s suit because they're the most unflattering thing in the world. Mate, they're back and they're not back in, not the original, not the way that they look, not with those big square toed shoes. Oh, Bowfin is the only word to describe that.